Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick of SiliconANGLE. Jeff, we're back here with Big Switch. Okay, Andrew Harding, Senior Director of Product Marketing um, of Big Switch, was in Palo Alto, moved to Mountain View, um, got a new team over there, growing fat. Well, not new team, expanded team. Um, you guys were in that wave of startups, really from the DNA of the open flow. First of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks, good uh, to be here. You guys were part of that, uh, uh, the early DNA of open flow, and uh, your founders have that academic background, doing some uh, the seminal work around open flow, which became the, the catalyst for uh, SDN, Software Defined Networking. It's, open flow is still around. Um, and then Nasira got bought by VMware, um, as you guys were getting your funding. Um, and some just great stuff happening around SDN. At, at that Setting time, times. it was just like, okay, there was a couple of horses on the track, um, you guys were one of them, and all of a sudden the Nasira thing kind of woke up everybody outside of the new the, the, the vertical of SDN. So um, give the folks out there a quick overview of, of Big Switch, kind of where it is, uh, where it's come from, where it is today, and, and what you're doing here at OpenStack. Sure, I think you, you covered it pretty well. It's you know, uh, Guido Oppenzeller and, and, and his work heading the open, uh, the open flow work within the, the Clean Slate Lab, and that transitioning from university to a commercial product over, over the last year is really the exciting stuff that's uh, happened recently. Um, and last, uh, last summer was, uh, was crazy times, and since then we've launched uh, the Open SDN Suite, our, our product suite, and had, uh, had, I think, more exciting product announcements than, uh, than work in, in research in the last, uh, last six months. So talk about the, what the Nasira acquisition has done for your business. Obviously you guys, that's a competitor to you guys now, it's VMware, um, and how has that changed your business and how has that changed the, the market? Because OpenStack really got a big lift from the SDN. A lot of code came in, a lot of, a lot of awareness around where this market's going, the data center obviously is one big impact uh, for I, Open, OpenStack. I think to, to folks who are already inside of SDN, the Nasira acquisition was um, you know, almost a, a, a noise that woke everyone else up. You know, so we uh, like we, Cisco. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot. You know, lots of folks. Lots of folks got a got a had a snooze button going off, and uh, I think that was uh, that was a, a point in time that really really saw the the kind of the incumbents or the, the legacy networking vendors um, waking up and saying, okay, this is this is real. For Big Switch, it was um, you know it, it, exciting in that the world is now recognizing SDN, and honestly, uh, nice to have clarity around uh, who's the leader in standalone SDN companies at this point. So what are you guys doing here at OpenStack, and what demos, if any, you're showing, and uh, what are some of the things that's happening right here? So there's uh, so much good stuff going on this week. We've got a, uh, a demo of our SwitchLite software going on down at um, another, another conference, and today here at, uh, at OpenStack, we're demoing um, our proposed blueprint for um, service insertion and service chaining. chaining. This is actually based on something that you can do today with uh, Big Switch's products. Um, we've taken that and added it as an OpenStack blueprint for adding services like load balancers or firewalls and chaining them. Um, you can chain them as layer two service, you can chain them as a kind of bump in the wire or as a network tap or as a layer three service. Um, we can do this in a way that enables the network operator to provision service change and then allow tenants in their network to choose which services they want to cobble together into a, a chain of services that allows them to do, uh, say, you know, an application server or a web server and then load balancing and firewalling right in front of that in a very simple manner and we're excited about this contribution. Okay, so Andrew, break it down for us here, okay, on the open source contribution. Obviously you guys have a big presence and a big part of your, your, your company is open source based. So one, break that down for, us, for the audience. Um, how much is open source of, of Big Switch? And then the big theme here is vendor neutral, right? So people want <coughs> choice. That's a big part of the OpenStack Foundation. So talk about what you guys are doing with open source, what part of your company is open source, if all of it, and what's not open source, and then talk about the kinds of choices people can get with Big Switch. 
Sure. So this is a um, a bit of a long and winding tale. <laughs> so uh, you can you know, tell it. we, okay. we started in open source with with Floodlight, which was based on on Beacon. These are open source SDN controllers. Project Floodlight has clearly been the um, the open source controller that emerged as as a leader, and that's the the core, and that's what our big that's what our big network controller, our commercial product, is based on. Um, we recently proposed that as a contribution to the recently announced uh, Open Daylight project. Um, and that, uh, that Open Daylight Consortium, excuse me, the Open Daylight Consortium is one place where open source is happening. Um, OpenStack is another, and I think our, our most recent contributions here is this, uh, this uh, blueprint around uh, service insertion and service chaining. And the really exciting thing about service chaining in OpenStack and with uh, Big Network Controller is that it's something you can do today. You know, service chaining and service insertion, people have been talking about for, I mean, years, um, we've heard announcements from other folks that uh, they'll maybe ship it next year or the next year. In an open system, it can be done today, and users can just choose the one that works. So we had a comment on Twitter 22 hours ago, um, Scott Lowe tweeted, NTT agrees with Big Switch, more plugins creates customer choice. Um, what is he referring to there, um, you know? Um, I think it may be referring to our, our quantum plugin that enables um, folks to provision virtual networks within Horizon and have those networks rolled out on our, our big virtual switch product. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here. Um, there's been a lot of action in open source and in, uh, in, in shipping software here in the last, uh, the last couple months. So one of the conversations out there in the keynote, which we found compelling, David uh, Floyer, was our analyst, was on earlier from Wikibon talking about it, um, was, was Bloomberg. One of the examples was talking about the innovations happening underneath and above OpenStack. Obviously you guys are playing down underneath OpenStack. What innovations are going on right now that you can point to that you're involved in that's um, lifting up and filling in the white spaces of, of OpenStack? I think putting service insertion or service chaining into kind of OpenStack proper is a critical innovation. This has been a tough problem in networking for years. You know, it's one reason why um, people who've been in networking or network security have all these boxes sitting around the network, these very, you know, um, the, the hot box here, some box from one vendor, and maybe only one boxes from, only boxes from a single vendor because you can't mix and match anything with proprietary systems doing multi-vendor service insertion that can use the best-in-class security Why device. Why has it been a hard problem? It's tough to get um, the incumbent networking vendors to cooperate. Um, you know, I maybe have some opinion there, but to focus on the positive. Um, <laughs> well, well, uh, well, to focus on the positive, what's the delta now? So, what did they have to do before, and what was the, the scale and uh, scope of the effort, and now what does this enable? I, I think it's communities like OpenStack, um, smaller communities like uh, Project Floodlight is focused on a you know yeah. on a, a problem in, in networking and, 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 S, and SDN. It's communities where uh, code is the currency, right? Where technical innovation that goes into the project is the currency. I think that's the real change. It's no longer an environment where you can write a spec, propose a protocol, and then just wait it out because. If folks want to get it done, if they want to really solve the problem, they can do that with code. Yeah, no, uh, slightly different twist on the question. In, in terms of the business problem, you know, and, and, the, and the issue that the service insertion solves, what are those guys doing today, or what were they doing before they had this option, and how's it going to change their world it, in terms of the guys that have to actually implement and execute so in, all these processes? In the past, service insertion was um, a complex and fragile cobbling together of different devices. And so you would need to build up a static system and in one place make one change and then test that change and then replicate that change and it's a very static and manual system. Okay. By putting it into OpenStack and by putting the you know security devices or application delivery controllers um, in the network and doing that programmatically, we can take what was a manual process and automate it. And okay. that's I think that's really the goal because in, in networking specifically, you know, around networking there's been a lot of automation that ends with a manual workflow on the network. Okay. So all the benefit of automation that's occurred in, in compute is diminished when you, when you get to a legacy network where the workflows have to be manual. By adding service insertion, as an example, as a part of OpenStack, that can be automated so people continue to get that business benefit all the way to load balancing and firewall or, or network tapping, other, other services they might be putting on the network. Okay, great. So talk about the uh, Excuse me. the uh, ONS summit that's going on right now, the ONS 2013. You guys are also down there. Um, your CTO gave a talk, we just saw that come up on the radar. Um, 
What's going on down there? Can you talk a little bit about what you guys yeah, showing at um, so, uh, Rob, Rob Sherwood w just gave a demonstration and a talk of our, our switch light software running on physical switches. Um, actually, I haven't, haven't seen it yet. I, we, I saw it uh, in, a, in a dry run, but okay. I've heard that it, it went very well. Um, I think it's uh, um, really exciting. It it's was called on Twitter a fluffless demo. There you go. It was a real fluffless <laughs> demo. I don't know if that's a compliment. Or not. It sounds like a fluff is not a compliment. Uh, this is, you know, this is. Uh, sometimes I'm I'm worried that networking <laughs> folks and 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 compute folks still don't talk to each other because we have these things the same week, and so <laughs> you guys know more about this demo we just did than I do. I saw it as we finished it up last week. It was. Uh, it was we don't miss a thing in SiliconANGLE. We know where all the action is. We got our, <laughs> our, our lackeys out there getting all the data. Um, but in all seriousness, there's two shows going on. I talked to Jason uh, uh, Matloff over there, his uh, friend, uh, his VP of marketing, and he was supposed to be here, and, but you have a contingent down there. We, uh, we swapped, I came up here. Uh, I'm a fan of Portland. <laughs> Get better beer. <laughs> Good beer here in Portland. Um, Good beer, beers and bikes. So, so given the compute, obviously converged infrastructure is a big theme that's been you know, kicked around, even going, but HP kind of coined the term, but David Floyer from Wikibon, we call it software-led infrastructure, because it's certainly not defined. Compute, storage, and networking is the core tenets of the sure. OpenStack Foundation here. They're rallying around those three elements. Um, Obviously, SDNs, a lot of work needs to get done there. Um, software defines being kicked around. We saw HP talk about it with their moonshot announcement, software defined servers, and then you got uh, software defined data centers, it's kind of like the moonshot, a little bit marketing hype right now, but um, what, is the, what is your take on that? Because now the interaction between all elements need to be in place. What is software defined, how do you define software defined these days? Um, is, there's a little bit of software defined washing, as we would say, going on, and people slapping some stuff on it, but for the most part, uh, is it just software, programmatic software? How are you guys looking at it? I know you guys have more of a purist view being at the networking level. You know, I think we're, we're the, the purists and the pragmatists coming, coming together. The, um, the purist view that, that came out of um, the, the, kind of the research has evolved so as it's inserted into, into production networks. And software-defined networking is really about making the network programmable, and that's different than having an API on a device that, that can make that single device program programmable. Software-defined networking is about having a physical infrastructure and then a logical layer on top of that that enables tenants and operators to see two different things and, and hopefully enable network operators to do less things manually, to do less things in a static way because that increases costs, that increases the likelihood you'll have an outage. So I think software is in all of these systems. It's how that software is used that's the critical difference. And one, one change in the last six months is that there's a clear contrast between the SDN washing and the folks who can get up on stage and do a fluffless demo of real switch firmware work, working today. The, the switch light stuff, I don't want to make too much news here, but the, yeah, uh, make the, news. the switch light <laughs> stuff is, um, is, is doing, doing great in production. We had planned beta in, uh, in uh, June, and it looks like we may come, come in a little early, actually. So we'll be shipping that before the planned beta in June. It's not, yeah, it's so not a free download yet, but it'll be there before the beta. Okay, so let's talk about the competition. Obviously, Nasira got sucked into um, VMware. I interviewed uh, Martin uh, at VMworld. He was very candid, and you know, he was talking about you know, his, his vision and what he wanted to do to, to put a dent in the universe with, with the, the innovation. Um, how are you guys competing against, say, now VMware? Um, and what do you guys do in particular? And you, know, you don't have to talk about their negatives, you can if you want, but you would also talk about what you guys are doing differently than them. You know, I think um, when, when I look at NVP, NVP made the, the leap from academic research, we started the same place in Stanford, same, same lab, to being inside of a big company, and in, that happened in one step. There's some stuff that has to happen in between those two things to make it a real scalable, deployable product. Um, this is the stuff that we're focused on, and we're focused on these things without the distractions of being inside of a, a company that does um, you know, things uh, in, addition to, in addition to SDN. So we've maintained focus on OpenFlow. Um, Martin has you know, different opinions on OpenFlow in, in different years. Um, we've we've held, the, held the focus and stayed on target with OpenFlow. And we're, uh, we're working through what has to happen with the product to take it from university research to real production deployments. There's issues with tunnel scalability that have to be worked through. There's issues with um, gateways in the network that are software based that have to be worked through. This is the normal course of any product as it goes from these very early deployments to large scale production deployments with the very early adopters to you know, the, the folks who are 
wanting to get the advantage of SDN, but also wanting the safety of a product they can they can go to and, and count on. And I think a focused SDN product um, can address these these uh, natural issues of any evolution of a product so more, Cisco, more effectively. So Cisco is pumping a, a lot of investment now. Obviously, it was a wake up call for them. <coughs> they were one of the ones that hit their bell rung a little bit on that one, with the, especially with the VMware and the VCE relationship. And you know, that's had its own little shakeout, separate conversation there. And don't want to don't want to rat hole into that <laughs> uh, politics of it. But obviously, they're the networking leader. And you know, some are saying a laggard, okay, in the sense that they've kind of rested on their laurels, and SDN is, is looking looked at, is looked at as an innovation opportunity. Now they're gearing up. What's going on with Cisco, and how are they being perceived in the in these communities? With open source is a big part of it, and how do you guys compete against Cisco? Yeah, I think we we compete against Cisco by having an open SDN offering that folks can get today. If folks want to get um, network monitoring via SDN, they can they can get it today. If folks want network virtualization, it's available today. And if you want switch firmware that can run on a Broadcom platform, Switch Lite for Broadcom, that goes into beta in June, I think we're actually going to have it in May. And we are going to change the network and get the same kind of automation and time savings that comes with automation, the same kind of operational cost savings that folks have gotten in compute. It's the very kind of core of what OpenStack's doing. We're going to bring that to the network. Um, you know, I, I don't want to trash, you know, trash you know, Cisco. That, no, you don't need you know, to. I mean, it, you know, they, um, they know, I think they're licking their own wounds a little bit, but yeah. you know, the, the signs we're seeing from Cisco is kind of like, as we say, the white smoke coming out of the chimney. You know, the Pope <laughs> has been elected, it's called SDN, <laughs> and um, you know, that's cool for them, and that's a good sign for Cisco. The question is, can they move there fast enough? And with the open source movement, scale out open source, really dominating the innovation and the developer community. It's a challenge. It, it's a challenge for a large company that has uh, uh, a legacy business to preserve, and um, for any company that doesn't really have a history of true innovation in, in software, in the way that it needs to be done in, in SDN. This isn't implementing yet how another. Be, how does it need to be get done in SDN? It, it's not implementing yet another protocol. With OpenFlow, you don't need to implement yet another protocol in the device. W with OpenFlow, you implement the protocol via OpenFlow, and, and extensions to OpenFlow and some, some other protocols as well, but this focused um, effort to deliver an instruction set for the switch so that we can extend the network from a controller is a fundamentally different model, and I think we, we see the degree to which folks get it or don't yep. get it by the degree to which they have embraced OpenFlow or try to, try to you know, have yet another proprietary interface to every device be the, be the panacea. One of the themes here, obviously, at OpenStack is because you've got the pure cloud guys, <coughs> is DevOps, which you know, we love. We have a site called DevOpsAngle.com. We started two years ago before anyone kind of knew what that was. We saw that trend. Um, so we don't want, I don't want to get your opinion on DevOps, because I think that's pretty much a done deal. People see the benefits of abstracting away the complexity and giving developers freedom to push buttons and do all their, their greatness uh, above on the top of the stack. Um, what I do want to ask you, though, is um, um, infrastructure as code is a term that's being kicked around more in mainstream, on mainstream, in enterprise and service providers, <laughs> as a viable philosophy, right? It, you know, prior to this year, infrastructure as code was kicked around by geeks, like, you know, super geeks in, in the trenches who understand programmatic software-based systems. What's your take on uh, infrastructure as code and where do you see it going? You know, I think the, the old way was to have devices as infrastructure and golden fixed configurations as infrastructure or parameters to that infrastructure. And it's a, it's a, it's a natural next step to think about, wait, these configurations could be dynamic. And so the thing that enables that dynamism, that could be the configuration of the system underneath. And if these infrastructure, if these configurations are dynamic and the infrastructure becomes that enabling piece that, that changes the configuration, you can stop thinking about the world in a device by device manner. And that's the, the fundamental shift. And I think that really is a, a generational shift. Um, or maybe it's a shift of folks who, uh, you have to have the mindset that came out of software and not out of network protocol and network Static protocol devices, configuration. Static devices, firewall, switches. Yeah, right. Because the safety was in the old way in fixing the configuration and knowing that fixed configuration wouldn't change. And, and, and the scale equation changed too, yeah. right? I mean, so you had X number of machines, thousands of machines, now you had millions, and right. you got virtualization. 
And no matter how smart the network engineer is and no matter how fast they type and how well they happen to know iOS, they can't type as fast as code can execute. And that's the fundamental change. That's a good one. Well, the other the thing it begs is, especially with the scale, you know, can can an individual uh, guy or team trying to innovate <laughs> compete with, you know, kind of this open model where you've got a large group of contributors coming at the problem from all different ways, um, and you know, a company like yours is so leveraging the open source community in OpenStack and your other your other um, new foundation. Can can the uh, legacy guys keep up? with that innovation. You know, I think the, um, our contribution to the recently announced Open Daylight Consortium. Open Daylight, um, that was and, the second and one. Project Footlight being the, the place where um, our open source controller is developed. I think that is a recognition um, that um, a single vendor's contribution can cause a, a, whole, a whole industry to, to move to a more, a more collaborative model. And this is, again, I think a generational shift rather than being you know, hyper competitive about this protocol or that protocol in a device, we can collaborate in, in a community that's contributing code and have it truly be a meritocracy, whether it's Project Floodlight or the OpenStack community or something like Open Daylight that, that's, that's brand new. If it truly is a meritocracy, then code wins. The best implementation will win. Code right. wins. I mean, I love that philosophy here, bring code to the table. Um, let's talk about um, use cases. Obviously, uh, one of the things that we talked about this morning that, uh, that in looking at yesterday, uh, reviewing yesterday was the vendorless hype here and really focus on the code and also the use users, right? You see you have a lot of great presentations from people putting out implementations, proof of concepts, and actual deployments of stuff, OpenStack uh, related projects. Yeah, still a lot of work to get done. Talk about Big Switch. What do you guys can point to right now where you can share in terms of people implementing op um, Big Switch, I was going to say open switch. <laughs> uh, big switch um, and uh, you, what your code. And, and, and if you can do it on an open source developer basis and then and take it to a user. So there's, there's um, we recently announced there's a nice uh, sort of momentum announcement around Project Floodlight and the folks using that from uh, the Stanford Research Institute to um, um, some some uh, folks in the, in the Midwest using it for a security application. Um, our customers right now are seeking to gain that strategic advantage of SDN and have been um, um, focused on rolling, making these deployments um, roll out successfully. Well, what are they doing? Can you name names? Yeah, we uh, we're not we're not naming names right now. There was some news uh, news yesterday where uh, um, someone leaked a large deployment of of Big Tap, but our focus right now is helping these customers gain a, gain an advantage in their business. And we're not we're not talking broadly about what did they who leak? That is. Big Tap. Uh, Big Tap was was leaked. Uh, Nick, I think Nick Lippis leaked it leaked it yesterday. Um, <laughs> So the, uh, um, it might not have been Nick, I shouldn't, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't paint him with a brush. I think it was on his website though. Um, <laughs> he linked to it, yeah. he amplified it. <laughs> so I think the, uh, um, the, the advantage that folks are getting from SDN is something they're wanting to hold close to the vest. We have a very large deployment of, of Big Tap with a technology provider and that's the one that if you keep, if you keep typing there, you'll find. Um, <laughs> and, and the folks that have, have uh, you know, been, been on our testimonials page, those are the folks we're, we're working with. So they're, they're there on the website. So what is the big use case? I mean, if you can point to like, where, you know, obviously where you guys have a groove swing on it, can you point to a specific it, use case or are, cases? There are two very cl clear use cases. The first one is network monitoring. Network monitoring in a traditional environment is very static, where you, you do port mirroring, or you have taps, and you aggregate them in one place, and this is kind of a fixed system, which means that if you need to see traffic that's over here, with a tool you have over here, there's not a good way to, to bring them together. By putting an SDN layer right in the middle, you can now get the traffic to the tools and kind of break the silos that have emerged in large data centers, because as traffic goes you know, more east-west and west, north-south and leaves the data center, it's actually harder to get universal visibility unless you put every tool everywhere and you have taps everywhere and aggregate them all, it's, it's harder to get visibility. So Big Tap enables folks to get the kind of visibility they need in a very large scale data, data center, especially when you've got east-west east, east west traffic. So that's one, using SDN to give visibility into the network. The second one is network virtualization. And that's really the focus of our work with, with OpenStack. With service chaining, you can actually add tapping in BigTap. Network virtualization enables a provider to spin up services or to enable users to spin up those services themselves. And with service chaining, users can even now 
as long as the blueprint is accepted, <laughs> we get it into <laughs> OpenStack. Um, users can, with OpenStack, can say, hey, I want to have a service here, I want to have a, um, and I want to spin up a, a web server or spin up an app server, and then I want that to be firewalled or I want that to be load balanced, and they can do that on their own. So it's not just automation with network virtualization, but it's delegation of that all the way out to the end user. Great, well, you guys, we've been following Big Switch for a while, obviously when you guys were in Palo Alto on Cowper <laughs> Street. Uh, I think I walked in and sat down with Kyle um, there, um, and one of the founders, was it Kyle? Probably Kyle Guido. Yeah, um, and uh, just, hey, I am just was visiting EMC Ventures and I popped over and walked in and there was no admin, I just started talking to him. And that a great concept. That was that was two and a half years ago when you guys just moved in. Well, we have bigger offices now, but we still welcome visitors. <laughs> <laughs> um, big I'll switch, and, and uh, you know, Jason's a great guy over there. Uh, our, our kids go to the same school, and your VP of marketing, great guy. Um, so I want you to get the last word on this segment before we end, and, and just and share with the folks. Um, bottom line, them your presence here at OpenStack, and what you guys are going to do as you go to market, and how you guys are going to differentiate going forward as a company. So I think the, um, specific to OpenStack, um, one, one milestone on, on that journey is that I think we actually have more folks from engineering here than we do from the commercial side of the business. Wow, so that's, we've got that's folks great. here who are really, really contributing and proposing, proposing blueprints that will drive this forward um, with, with real work. Um, there, there are those of us who wear uh, golf shirts with a logo and um, we, you know, we do like a little bit of hype but we want this to be about the contribution to the community and then the contribution that community can make to the overall improvement of, of how folks can run data centers. For the company, um, I think it's really about taking us on this journey from, you know, we're, we're way past research. We're in, that, we're in that time when the product is uh, meeting the needs of the, the innovators and the folks who really want to gain a, a huge advantage from something new in their network. And the next step of the journey is to get it to the folks who want the advantage, but also want the safety of knowing that it has been rolled out before, that the product is baked. And that's, that's the journey that we're on with Big, big Tap and big, big Virtual Switch. There are products folks can get today and then SwitchLite is uh, going to be in beta in June, maybe a little bit earlier, because it looks like we're uh, um, rolling a little bit better than expected there. Okay, Andrew Harding with Big Switch here. They're also at ONS in uh, San Francisco, and you guys are doing great. Let's see how the market shakes out. You guys are competing with on open source, and that's a good thing. Obviously, that market's working. Um, this is theCUBE, our flagship program here at OpenStack, exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit uh, 2013, Portland, Oregon. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks, guys.